Welcome to the EKG Guy if this is your first time. I'm glad you're joining us and welcome back if you're returning. First off, I want to thank all the thousands of you that have recently purchased our course and our books and all the videos. So uh, that's separate from this online. All right. And if you want access to that, go to www.ekg.md. Okay. And click on the course. Um, thank you all for, you know, it's been amazing. Just in the last week, we've had so many of you that have reached out in, uh, in support of the course and realized that, you know, this is finally taking you from beginner to advanced. And that was a struggle I had and one that um, hope that you don't have to go through yourself. All right. So we've been going through our EKG coding reference guide. And what we are at is at part six, okay? And that's down here, myocardial infarction. In this lecture, we're going to look at acute inferior MI, okay? So an inferior myocardial infarction in the acute setting. What findings we would expect to see. So if you don't have access to the coding reference guide, we've made it available. So all you have to do is put this link into your search bar, enter your email, click submit, You'll get an email, so make sure you check it. And from there, you'll click on a link and that will give you direct access, okay? And that's only for the first time. Next time you go through, you don't have to go through all that, but that just helps us uh, confirm your email and uh, secure your email through this process. All right, so acute inferior MI, let's get started here. So inferior MI, age recent or probably acute. So meaning we think that this inferior myocardial infarction is likely in the acute setting. What do we see on the EKG? Well, there's a few things that we're gonna look for, okay? We're gonna look for pathological Q waves, okay? So we're gonna look for pathological Q waves. The other thing that's gonna be key is the ST segment elevation, okay? So you want both of those because if you just had the pathological Q waves, then we would say that that is likely an old or age indeterminate inferior MI, which we'll look at in another lecture. But in this case, we want to see the ST segment elevation. And you wanna see it uh, in at least two contiguous inferior leads, okay? So what are the inferior leads? So the inferior leads are two, three, in AVF, okay? And if you look at our quadrant system, you can imagine lead two here, lead three here, and lead AVF here. And when we say we wanna see these pathological Q waves and ST segment elevation in two contiguous leads, we want two adjacent leads. So it could be two in AVF, it could be three in AVF, or it could be all three of them, okay? But as you can see, lead three and lead two are not contiguous, okay, anatomically. So you want something like that, two in AVF, three in AVF, or all three. So let's look at those leads. So these are inferior limb leads, which are here on the left side of our standard EKG are the limb leads. Here's two, three, and AVF, okay? And so we said we want them at least in two contiguous leads, so we can say two and AVF. So notice you have these Q waves that are forming, okay? And you also have some ST segment elevation present, okay? So look at that in this one here. You also, if you look at AVF, you can see these wide Q waves, okay? Remember that our Q waves have to be with of at least 30 milliseconds, we're saying, okay? And remember, one small box is equal to 40 milliseconds. So if you imagine if it's at least one of those small boxes, then that equals it, and at least one millimeter deep, okay? Or 0.1 millivolts. Often, as I say, I tend to want it a little deeper, but that's fine. That's the criteria we've been using, so we'll stick to it. In AVF, you see those Q waves forming, and you also see elevation of the ST segment, okay, there. That flat um, ST segment, that is characteristic of uh, an MI, okay, in the acute setting. So you have the Q waves and the ST segment elevation. So we said two we looked at, we looked at AVF, and we also have it likely most prominent in lead three. Look how deep these Q waves are here, okay, and notice the ST segment elevation above the baseline. So you have both the pathological Q waves and the ST segment elevation in these inferior limb leads, all three of them, okay? And it seems like most prominent in three and then AVF followed by lead two, okay? 
So one thing to keep in mind. And notice, because it's most prominent in three, we actually have some reciprocal changes. So one is here, lead one, and AVL is here. And what is pretty much mirror of lead three? If you put a mirror here, okay, as you can imagine, the opposite, I'm saying, of lead three is essentially lead AVL. So look at lead AVL here. So this is AVL, and notice that you obviously have the, these big R waves, but notice the ST segment depression there, okay? You can see it here as well. So that's one thing to keep in mind. You're seeing those reciprocal changes as well. So remember, in order to make the diagnosis, you need the pathological Q waves in the ST segment elevation, okay? If it's just the ST segment elevation without the Q waves, we would call this a myocardial injury pattern, okay? Now we're calling it an inferior MI, age, recent, or probably acute, because you have the Q waves with those, the ST segment elevation, okay? So hopefully that makes sense, all right? So again, the inferior leads, 2, 3, and AVF, you want two contiguous leads that have these findings. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay. So completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay. These are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book Okay, and then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use the, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay, a lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay, you can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay, and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, 
video access okay and now we're offering 25% off 25% off put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material so uh, we don't really make much off it it's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care that's why we do this and we love doing it so thank you so much for your support um, if you have any questions just leave them below and we're happy to answer them all right have a great day